Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Lone Vic, and as you can see, this is Twilight Inscription. This is the how to play video for this highly anticipated, gigantic, huge, epic scale roll and write game in the Twilight Imperium universe from Fantasy Flight Games. This is a game for one to eight players. Oops, this is eight. But I will be explaining the multiplayer rules, let's call them like this, for three to eight players, because the one and two player game have a bit of a change when it comes to the setup and to the gameplay. So I will be covering those in a separate video. If you like the video, you can always support the channel by clicking the like button, hitting the subscribe, ringing the notification bell to be notified about new videos, you know the drill. And right now, let's take a look at how to set up Twilight Inscription for three to eight players. Okay guys, so when it comes to the setup, each player will need one marker per player and four sheets. One navigation, one expansion, one industry and one warfare. And now keep in mind that those sheets are double-sided and they are labeled here in those corners with numbers and letters. Now the numbers don't really matter because those sheets are drawn from a pool of eight of each but the letter has to be agreed on because the B sides are symmetrical and the A sides, the other side, are asymmetrical. So you have to agree before the game that all of you are playing the same side, whether it's A or B. Once you have your four sheets and your marker, place them like so in front of you and place the Mechatol Rex board in the middle of the table so that it's clearly visible for everybody. Now let's take a look at the cards. So let's start with the 24 faction cards, out of which each player draws three and selects one to keep as their faction for the game. So I will, for example, take the Isarl tribes and I will place them somewhere here and we'll be talking about these later. Each player should also get a reference card, which is pretty important. I'll place it here for now and we'll get back to it and discuss it in detail in just a moment. And then the last set of big cards are the event cards that will form the event deck. And now, as you can see, these have different numbers on them and also they are in two colors, the dark ones and the light blue ones. So. What you need to do for the setup of the game is you need to separate them by color and by number, which will basically give you 10 stacks. As you can see, five stacks of black cards and five stacks of blue cards. You need to shuffle each of the stacks separately and then create one event deck in the following order. The blue card with the highest number is always on the bottom, followed by one black card with the same number, going back to the blue and going back to the black. And then you go to the next number in line and again you start with the blue and you interchange it with a black card. And you continue this until you create a deck that will have a blue number one card on top. Let's see if I can make it so. Interchanging, interchanging, and there are two blues and one black number one card. And here we have the deck. Place it somewhere above the Mechatol Rex board so that it's in easy access to the players. And that's it for the large cards. Now, in the deck of small cards, you have a speaker card, which you give to the player who will be the leading player, who will be rolling the dice and will be managing the event deck. You also have 12 agenda cards, four with number two, four with number three, and four with number four. From each of those numbered sets, select one card and place it below the Mechatol Rex board. The two is on the left, followed by a three, and followed by a Four. You also get a deck of 18 relic cards, which you should shuffle and place next to the Mechatol Rex board. And last but not least, you have 12 objective cards, which relate to the colors of your sheets. And there are three each. Select one for each color, so one navigation, the blue one, and place it here. One objective from the expansion green set and place it here, one industrial yellow objective and place it here, 
and also one red warfare objective and place it here. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, guys, but I've got the Polish edition of this game and the wording is all a bit strange to some of the viewers. But as you can see in the video, I'm using the English nomenclature from the English rulebook, so I hope you won't have any problems with that. The last thing that you need are the dice. And now you are ready to play a game of Twilight Inscription, ladies and gentlemen. Now, before we dive into the game turn and how we really play the game, we need to explain three key concepts that we will be following through the rest of the game. The first of which is the idea of resources. There are three types of resources in Twilight Inscription. They are represented on these dice and they are being used on each of these sheets to gain some assets and victory points. The first resource with this symbol is the material resource. It's present on the black die and it has its own red intensification die. The second resource, as you can see, it's influence and it's present on the intensification die and it has its presence on the black dies as well. And the last resource is research, green dye for intensification and a normal black dye. And I won't be using those names too much, I will be referring to them as blue, red and green because I don't want to overcomplicate stuff. It's easier to remember the colors than the names all of the time because the names are not really referenced anywhere in the game, the colors are everything around here. So this is the first concept, the resources that you spend. The second concept is the assets that you can gain by spending resources and what you can do with those. Let's take a look at this reference card right now because it's very important when it comes to the assets. This is the Polish word for assets, guys, so uh, bear with me here. Now, assets can be divided into two categories. We've got these assets with a dotted line around them which means that when you gain this asset and put a circle around it, you immediately trigger the effect that's described next to the asset on this reference card. And then the asset is done and spent. So you have to do it immediately after collecting the asset. You cannot wait with this. The other side has assets with, as you can see, this dashed outline. And this means that when you circle this asset after collecting it, after gaining it, you do not trigger any immediate effects. These assets can be saved and spent when player chooses to spend them, obviously. And then when you decide to spend them, you cross the asset out on your sheet where it was gained and you pay for something else with it, basically. So resources and assets, two different things. And now the last thing, the last idea, the last concept that we need for this game is the concept of active sheets. Now, in the beginning of every round, you will be deciding which sheet is your active sheet. And that means that this is the only sheet, and you've got four of those, as you can see, that you can introduce any changes on, that you can add any resources or spend any resources on, or any assets, basically. So, Per round, you are only working with one sheet. But if you have an asset with a dashed outline that's collected on a different sheet, you can always cross it out from any sheet in order to spend it on your active sheet. So this is the only time where the non-active sheets interact with the active sheet. Cross out something from anywhere and spend it on the active sheet for the round. So basically, those are all of the key concepts that we need for the game. Now, let's talk about the game turn and how the game flows. Now, the game's managed by this event deck and the speaker at the beginning of each round uncovers the next card from the event deck and triggers all of the effects described. There are four types of those cards in the event deck. There are strategy cards, war cards, council cards, and production cards. And war, council, and production cards we will discuss later in the video because they are quite simple to trigger and quite simple to resolve. The strategy cards, these are the most numerous in this deck, are where the whole meat of the game 
happens. So we'll be talking about those first. So once you uncover a strategy card like this, for example, and each card will have a set of instructions to what to do here so that you don't forget anything. And the strategy cards also have, as you can see, three resources printed here. So the first step after uncovering a strategy card is that each player chooses their active sheet for the round and they spend those three resources on the active sheet only. And after everybody is done with this, the speaker rolls the dice. And after rolling the dice, each player spends the resources rolled on the black dice as it was the case with the ones from the strategy card. I will place it here. And if any player has an intensification die unlocked on their active sheet, they can also use the resources from the rolled intensification die. And after players distributed the resources from the dice, the round is over, the speaker uncovers a new card, and if it is a strategy card, you can activate another sheet, a different one or the same one as in the previous round, and the whole process is repeated again. So now let's take a look very up close at each of the four sheets and talk about what you will be spending the resources on and what are you doing on each of those sheets before we go into the war event cards, the council event cards and the production event cards. Okay guys, so for the first sheet let's choose navigation because I think that this one is pretty simple. Now, if you activate your navigation sheet and want to spend your resources here, here you have the legend on what you can exactly spend those resources. So you can spend the red and the green resources, as you can see, to explore a system. What that means is that for every resource spent on exploring a system, you draw a continuous line along a path to extend the existing lines around the galaxy. And that means that you have access to the systems that are connected through those lines. This is your home planet. Each player usually already has three planets explored and you can extend those lines basically anywhere. Now, if you spend a blue resource on this navigation board, you claim a system. And claiming a system means that you circle the system. And here I circled a system with an asset that has a dashed outline. So now I do nothing, but I will be able to cross out this asset later on when I need to use it. And if you circle a dotted outlined asset when you are claiming an available explored system, then you immediately spend it as you would in the game. And that's basically it. There are two interesting spaces here. One is this system or systems with relic cards. And this is one of the only ways of getting relics in the game. When you claim a system with a relic card, you draw one relic card from the top of the deck you put the number of victory points next to the claimed system and you trigger the effect described on the card. And that's it. Those are your victory points at the end of the game. The second system that's interesting is the Mechatel Rex system. If any player explores up to Mechatel Rex and then claims this system using the blue resource, you put that player's name on the top available space of the Mechatel Rex board. And this is the amount of victory points this player gets at the end of the game. So you can input it here. And this is the amount of votes that the player will get automatically. And they can add those votes to their industry sheet. But we'll be talking about those later. Now, apart from scouring the galaxy for assets, each player also has two technologies that they can unlock over here. 
So you can unlock this technology by spending three resources. Also here, three resources, instead of using them here to travel uh, around the galaxy. Or you can spend an asset that you've gained somewhere else to unlock it automatically. And those technologies are well, very well explained in the rule book, so I won't be going through all of those, but I will tell you about the gravity drive here. Because the gravity drive, once invented, lets you explore along these lines into these wormholes and come out in the same move in the different part of the galaxy so that you can reach quicker some other places. Apart from this, every sheet also has a space to mark the intensification dice, but we'll be talking about this later. And here we've got the scoring for the card, and we'll be talking about that in the very end. And this is it for the navigation sheet. So let's move on to the next one, which is expansion. So expansion has a few planets on it, as you can see, six usually. In the expansion sheet, you will be spending the resources to mark these areas or cross out these areas on the planets. And once a whole row or column is crossed out on a planet, you circle the asset that's related to the row or the column. And if it's a dashed outlined asset, you keep it and spend it later. If it's a dotted line one, you spend it immediately. But in order to be able to spend any resources on any of the planets, you first need to unlock the planet. What does that mean is, remember the asset that we've collected previously on the navigation sheet? Now you would be able to for example, if this was the first round and you did those lines and claimed this system, so in the next round you could activate your expansion sheet, cross out the planet asset from your navigation sheet, and then cross out this planet asset, for example, here. And this would mean that you have access to this planet and you can spend resources on it to cross out these spaces. So this is the only way in which assets can be spent from other sheets. This is the active sheet. I spent an asset, crossed out an asset from my navigation sheet to make a change here. And we've got six planets and that's basically it. Here we've got the space docks. And as you can see, the space docks require some resources to be active or spending a planetary resource. And you get a intensification die asset when you build a space dock. Now those intensification die assets mean that once you collect this asset, you can cross it out to mark this intensification die space on the active sheet. So for example, if this sheet is active right now during the round and I would have to spend three green resources because that's what the strategy card, for example, said or the dice roll, I would be able to collect this intensification die asset. And if I want, I can cross it out automatically to add an intensification die to this sheet, or I could cross it out later in the game to add a blue intensification die to any of my other sheets. And this means that right now, when we are rolling the dice during each strategy round, I would also be interested in the blue intensification die result, apart from the black dice, if this sheet is the active one. Okay, you also have two technologies that you activate in the same way as in the navigation sheet. And here's the population tracker. Now the population tracker is related to a dotted asset. This one, that's the population asset. Whenever you collect anywhere on any sheet this population asset, you mark the next victory point on this track and you can grow up until four victory points here and then you will be summing them up at the end of the game. And here you've got a resource counter that's basically helpful to track how many resources you need to spend or you can spend throughout a round and after every round it can be erased and prepared for a new round but you don't have to use it if you don't want to, it's nothing important. Okay, let's move on to the industry sheet right now. 
Okay, so here is the industry sheet. And we'll be worried about these two spaces a lot later. And we'll be talking about these right now in general. So this is the faction industry grid that we will be crossing out and claiming spaces on. And this is the industry chart where we'll be spending the commodities as you can see. So these three symbols over here and we'll be collecting trade goods for later. So here is the legend for spending resources. We've got two technologies that we can also acquire through spending the green resource or the respective assets. We have the spaces for intensification die marking if we spend anything. And here on this industry grid, we have one space that's crossed out. And now let's take a look at the legend here. So the red resource can be spent on this sheet in order to cross out a, an unmarked space on this grid which is neighboring to any marked space. Now a marked space is a space that's crossed out or circled because it was used. So you spend a red resource to basically cross out a space that's neighboring any other marked space. And those crossed out spaces mean that you won't be able to use this asset anymore. Now you can spend the blue and the green resources to acquire or claim any unmarked space that's neighboring a crossed out one. So as you can see, this is going to be required, the crossing out is going to be required to expand around this sheet. And now I can, for example, claim this because it's next to the crossed out one if I spend a blue or green resource. And once you claim this commodity, you cross it out on this track and you go from left to right. Once you cross out a whole vertical column, for example, if I also claimed this commodity, once a whole column is claimed, you mark the plus one trade good below this column. And once a whole row is marked until this victory point asset, you circle the asset automatically as well. So here you have different assets that you can collect. You've got those commodities in three colors. You have intensification dice that you can get. And you have the votes that once collected, you mark here on this track. And similarly, once you reach this space, you also get the victory points and these grow. You also can spend some additional assets to transfer them into those. So the blue one spent here, a blue asset spent here would mean four red resources and a yellow asset spent here would mean three blue resources. So you'll be crossing out and claiming spaces around this board a lot if you focus on this sheet. Two more interesting things here are those spaces which have double commodities. Once you encircle that, you cross out two of that on the row. And also this gray asset, which when circled means that you take your faction card and you trigger the ability related to this gray symbol. This green space and this space for votes will be referred to later, but I will just remind you one more thing. Remember that I told you that on the navigation space you can reach Mechatol Rex and get listed here on this table? Once you are and you get these votes, you don't mark them here, but you mark them here directly. So if you are the first player to reach Mechatol Rex, you get four votes, you mark them here, one, two, three, four, because everybody has two votes as a default. And also you can spend assets here to cross out those spaces to get faster to different reaches of this grid. So that covers the grid of the industry and the industry table over here. And now let's move on to the last sheet, which is warfare. Now, Warfare also has a few familiar things. So two technologies and the intensification die place and the place for points, but it also has this grid and five types of units. Now, this grid has an orange line at the bottom and is divided into one, two, three, four sections, right and left halves. 
These right and left halves mean that you will be fighting your neighbor on your right and your neighbor on your left. And here you have awards for winning or penalties for losing the war with your neighbor on your right and the neighbor on your left. You can spend resources here, apart from the technologies, on purchasing units. Infantry, you can purchase how many you want per any resource. Any one resource gives you one infantry. You can purchase four PSDs. Three of them cost you two blue resource each and one costs you an asset, a blue asset. You can also get these units for three red resources and then one blue asset and they also give you a victory point when built and then you've got the dreadnoughts and the war suns that need to be unlocked using an asset red and green respectively in order to start building those and once you build any unit by crossing out all of those resources and circling the victory points you can place them here and the rules are that, for example, if I want to place my first PSD because I've spent two blue resources, I have to start creating this PSD so that it's next to the orange line that we have here. So I would be able, for example, to put my PSD here, 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 and claim this node here. And then the next unit that I would like to build, if it was, for example, a cruiser, and I circle the victory point, I would be able to build anywhere neighboring the orange line or an already created unit. I would, for example, be able to build it here, one, two, three, or for example, here, here, and even here, because you can cross these sections and go up however you want. Additionally, when it comes to this war grid here, you have these red spaces, which can't be occupied by anything. So basically you have to zigzag around them when you are placing your units. And for now, this is all about warfare and we will come back to it once we discuss the event cards. All right, guys, so now you know what to do with each of those sheets during a strategy event. And now let's talk about all the other events that you can have in the game. Now, the next event is the production event, and I will find the production card right now in the deck just to show you how it looks like. So this is a production event. As you can see, there are no resources to be spent over here, but any time you uncover a production event, each player takes a look at their industry sheet and marks as many trade goods here in this green space as they have those plus ones marked at the bottom of the industry table of, over here. So, for example, if I have plus one, during each of those production events, I would be getting one new trade good. If I had three, I would be getting three new trade goods every single time. And what that means is that each trade good as an asset can be crossed out to be spent as any one resource on the active sheet so, for example, if this sheet is active during a strategy round, I could cross out a trade good from here to use it as one of the resources on any of the planets. But also, every two unused trade goods give you one victory point at the end of the game. And that's it for the production event in the event deck. There are two more events and we will be able to go to the scoring as well. The next event is the council event and as you can see no resources here as well the council event means that you again take a look at your industry board you take a look at how many plus one votes you have on this track and you add these many votes over here to the voting box and then you uncover the next consecutive agenda card which will be matching the reverse side of the event card that you've taken so i've drawn a third one but the first one should be the second one obviously and the speaker takes the card reads what are the two options that you can be voting for and then each player takes their industry sheet and secretly without anybody seeing crosses out the number of votes they want to use puts it in here and checks whether he was voting for the green or the red side of the card. When everybody is ready, you uncover your votes, 
tally everything up and introduce this effect and everybody is being affected by what we have on those cards. Not only the players who voted for the correct option, but everyone. And then the card is discarded. And the last card that we will be talking about is the war card. And also, no resources here. So once a war card is flipped, you take a look at your grid and you do the following things. First, you create a new horizontal line along this dashed line on this war grid. So right now all the new units will have to be created above this new line from now on, for, from the next strategy phase. And then you calculate how many nodes you have marked on the left and on the right side of this grid. So for example here I've got one, two, three nodes on the left and I've got one, two, three nodes on the right. Because as you can see this node is above the line even though I've created it earlier before the war event so it doesn't count for this battle. And then you compare your strength to the strength of the player on your right and to the strength of the player on your left. If you won, you circle the asset for the victory on each side and you can use it later. If you lost, you circle the minus one victory point on the side that you lost on. So there will be four wars in the second, third, fourth and fifth event group. One additional thing that can help you with your war effort are the assets that you can find on the navigation sheet which give you a plus one to the strength in combat against the players on your right or on your left as the arrow shows. And this works for all of the wars that will be fought, not only a single one. Okay, so now after we have all knowledge about all of those cards and how to spend the resources, so let's talk about when the game ends and how do we tally up the points. Now the game ends once a card from the fifth level of event cards is uncovered that says that this is the last war and after that the game ends. So you fight the last war on this level and then you tally up all the points. And talking about tallying up points, I need to mention the objective cards. These have objectives for each of the sheets. And once you achieve the described objective, at the moment that you do it, you take the higher number of victory points that you can see on the bottom of the card, you put it in on the respective sheet where you have the word objective here, and then you flip this card over so that all the remaining players can only get the lower number of points. And if two players or three players fulfill the objective in the same round, and this is the first time that it is done, then they all get the higher number of points. And so you can claim those four objectives. And at the end of the game, basically once the game end is triggered by the card from the fifth group of event cards, you tally up all the marked spaces with the victory points on each sheet, plus your awards for the objectives that you put in here, and you sum it up and whoever has the most points wins the game. So where you can get the victory points for? On the navigation sheet, you get victory points for the relic cards, you input them here, you can get some victory points for those nodes that you claim, and you can get points for reaching Mechatol Rex and being entered on this sheet. On the expansion sheet, the only victory points you get are the ones you get for advancing the population track using the population asset that can be found in different places around those planets usually. On the industry sheet, you get victory points on this table of industry once you reach each of those nodes with the victory points. And also you get one victory point per two unused trade goods that you have at the end of the game. And on the warfare sheet, you get victory points by winning some of the battles, like for example here, by constructing units and also by claiming the nodes with your units which are marked with victory points. And that's it guys, we've arrived at the end of this game. 
This was Twilight Inscription, the roll and write game in the Twilight Imperium universe. It's a complicated one to get kind of familiar with from the word go, but once you play it once or twice, it gets pretty uh, easy to navigate and you get into the flow of the game uh, quite much. So if you have any questions about the rules, if you have any doubts, leave the questions in the comments. I will be sure to answer everything I can. And for now, also remember about liking, subscribing and notification bells to support the channel and be notified about the new videos on my channel. And for now, thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. My name was Lone Vic. This was Twilight Inscription. I hope this video clarified a lot when it comes to the game and see you soon on my channel in another of my videos. Have a great day. Bye-bye. See ya.